Roku seems like the most impossible bet to make to me as a venture investor because you have Apple TV as an incumbent, you have Google as an incumbent, and then you have these other big streaming services who, you know, maybe they don't have hardware yet, but mm, maybe they could buy something. And so walk me through how you have the audacity when something like Roku is trading at 30 bucks a share, you know, whatever, a couple of years ago, to say that company can compete against the duopoly, Google and Apple, and then Amazon, all three of them, well, actually two out of the three do not care about margin on hardware. The only one who cares about margin on hardware is Apple. So you're up against three giants who don't care about money. And Roku does the same thing. How do they win? I think that's a great question. And it, yeah, audacity is a great word for it because um, the Wall Street will always make you think that you're wrong. And so you got to be really firm on why you might be right. And so all of this has been carefully written about. But A, I would call Roku technically the incumbent here because hmm. they were the first to market. And they, you know, they, they actually came out around the same time as Reed Hastings with Netflix. So um, it just took this long for ad supported um, to come out, Avod. Uh, mm -hmm. versus subscription video on demand uh, to be picked up specifically not by the cord cutters, you and I, mm -hmm. but by the brand advertisers. And so the other thing is that they own the whole stack, which uh, Google owned the whole stack and Amazon eventually got into, but they had designed an operating system that was flawless for very cheap. Mm -hmm. And it fits well into low cost um, television sets or smart TVs. Um, all that is great because they have this hardware and they have the operating system that they can um, do very well with. But ultimately, Roku's path to a lot of Wall Street gains still is today is that they are an ad uh, platform. So we are moving into a world where brand advertisers, which are on, you know, pay TV, you know, linear pay TV are moving on to um uh, they're they're cutting, you know, they're moving towards the cord cutters. So they're going over to OTT. So Budweiser, for the first time, did not advertise in the Super Bowl. Um, they are moving over to Roku. I mean, you know, mm -hmm. Roku and its competitors, those brand dollars are actually worth as much as mobile. Um, pay TV ad dollars have been a holy grail for some time. So you're talking your Pizza Huts. Pizza Hut can't really advertise on Facebook as effectively as they can advertise on a television screen. And if you can add in the data, that comes from you viewing OTT, uh, set top box or smart TV, Roku's, uh, you know, Android, Google, that data is now informing your Pizza Hut ads, your Budweiser ads, um, wow. whatever yeah. it might be. That, that's a big deal for pay TV advertisers who did not budge and did not spend on mobile very much. Um, see, that so it's takes a budget like a, migration. Yeah, it takes a really deep analysis of that because what yeah. you're also realizing in all of this is, okay, sure, hardware is a commodity but audience is not, right? Mm -hmm. And the ability to aggregate an audience together like that, even though you can commodify the hardware, there was another trend going on, which is, I don't know if you've had this experience, but with my NBA league pass, there's an option to turn off ads. Hulu, I can turn off ads. HBO Max, no ads. Netflix, no ads. Disney Plus, no ads. So I'm looking at consumers and thinking, wait a second, the highest end consumers are opting out of advertising um, uh, you know, across some of these top platforms, like when's the last time you saw an ad, right? And I, oh, I actually pay for YouTube. I don't know if you do this. Do you pay for the YouTube premium service that takes ads out? I'm curious if either of you pay for that. Mm -mm. Oh my God, yeah. it's the greatest bargain in the history of media. You, you don't know how many YouTube ads you're watching, but my Lord, just not having to click, skip the ad after five seconds, 20 times a week or a day or however long you're on there. It's incredible. So where do those advertising dollars go? Roku, right? Like it's a really interesting uh, funneling there of consumers.